In this video, you're going to learn how to customize the errors that get sent back when the file upload fails, whether it's because the file is not of the right type or whether it's because it's too large and doesn't meet the file size limitation we've set. Either way, we can go ahead and send back a JSON error message instead of trying to render this HTML document, which is what we're seeing right now. The first thing we're going to do is take the Malter middleware out of the situation altogether. It'll be easier to explore this without figuring out what's Malter and what's Express. So all I'm going to do is remove it. No longer will we use that middleware, though we'll add it back in shortly. Next up, we're going to create some middleware like we did earlier in the class. I'm just going to define a function. Right here, error middleware will be a function. We'll get request, response, and next, which we know we get with our middleware functions. And all I'm going to do every single time is throw a new error. So right here, throw new error with the following message from my middleware. And this is what we're going to register as the middleware to use for post upload. So right here, I will reference that function. Perfect. Now with this in place, we can go ahead and run this route from Postman and see what we get back. I'm going to head over to Postman, switch over to post forward slash upload. I'll fire that off. And what do I get? Down below, I get some HTML. It looks exactly like what I had before. The only difference is that the error is now the one that we've provided. So here we've completely taken Malter out of the equation, but we're still seeing a very similar response where we're getting an HTML document back. We can go ahead and address that using our own little middleware example, and the same solution will work once we bring Malter into the mix. Now the problem here is that the middleware is throwing an error and we haven't registered any code to run when that happens. We can go ahead and do that by providing another callback function down below. So after the route handler, which only runs when things go well, we'll provide another function with the following arguments. The first is the error that we're catching. Then we have the request and response arguments. And then we have next, which we could optionally use, but which we won't. It's important that we provide all four of these. So express knows that this function is designed to handle errors. Now down below, we can actually choose what we want to send back and we can go ahead and customize it to fit our needs. So for example, I could use the following response dot status to set up a 400 and then I could use send to send that back. Let's go ahead and save the program with our one function added on to the end of the post call. And we're going to run the exact same request from Postman. I'll send that off. And what do I get down below? I have a 400, the status code we set up with an empty body, which is exactly what I specified. Now from here, we can take things even further and actually send the correct error message back. So I could send back some JSON with the error property where the value comes from the message property on the error itself. This would allow the client to know why things failed. And if I go ahead and rerun the request with this code saved, I would expect to see my message showing up. So right here, I have from my middleware showing up, which is great. Now the client is getting a useful error message back in JSON as opposed to that HTML page. With this in place, all we need to do is swap out the error middleware with the middleware we were using before. So right here, I'm going to remove the function and I will use upload.single once again. Right here, I am uploading what I believe I called upload. Let's go ahead and double check that over in the request. Yes, that is correct. And with that in place, we no longer have a need for that middleware function we defined. Now what we have is an upload endpoint that accepts images, but also correctly handles errors when things go wrong. So let's go ahead and make something go wrong. Over here, we are currently uploading sample doc file. This should work since it is a document. I send it off. And like we had before, I get my 200. Now let's go ahead and swap that out for something else. I'll try to upload an image instead of a word document. Right here, I'm uploading profile pic.jpg. 
I send that off. And what do I get? I get my error message as a nice, clean JSON response body. Error, please upload a Word document. It could not be clearer. So all we really did was we added another function onto the end of the route handler call. In this case, app.post, but the same strategy would work for patch, delete, get, or anything else. This function needs to have this call signature, this set of arguments that it expects. That's what lets Express know that this is the function set up to handle any uncaught errors. In this case, any errors that have occurred because Malter threw an error when it got a bad upload. So all we did is add this function. Now it's your challenge to do the exact same thing for the other route we've been working on. I'm gonna head over to the user router where I'll paste in some challenge comments right here. What I'd like you to do is clean up the error handling. You're going to set up the error handler function for this particular endpoint. When that occurs, you will send back a 400 with the error message. And finally, you'll test your work. Try to upload something, whether it's too big or not an image, that's going to trigger an error and make sure you actually get the JSON response in Postman. Take some time to knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and kick things off together by setting up that function. This is going to come at the very end and it has to have the correct call signature. Remember, that is an error. Request, response, and next, followed by the rest of the arrow function definition. Down below, we'll use response.status to send back a 400, letting them know that there's something wrong with the data they've provided. Either the file is too big or it's not an image and we'll use send to send back the error message. On our object, which will be parsed to JSON, we are going to set up error with the value coming from the message property on the actual error object. Now that we have this in place, things should be working from Postman. I can remove the challenge comments since we're moving on to step three, where we test our work. I will save the user router, head over to Postman, switch over to the upload avatar request and test things out. Now, right here, I'm trying to upload a PDF that failed before and it should still fail just with a different response body. Right here, please upload an image, which is fantastic. Next up, let's use a valid upload. So right here, I can upload that robot profile picture. I'm going to send that off. This should work right here, it does. It does match the file extension and it's not larger than a megabyte and that upload is accepted. Now that we have this in place, the next step in the process is to figure out how we can add authentication and actually associate this image with the user who uploaded it. That's what we're gonna focus on in the next lesson. So let's go ahead and jump into that.